So today's topic is about clearing the path to natural healing. And my goal in this workshop is twofold. One is to really share with you, one, what is natural healing? Second, how, what, what can we do to allow this in our life? And then share some tools with you as we go along uh, on, on how you can practice your own natural healing, okay? And uh, I want to keep it a little bit more interactive. So at certain points, I would pause and ask you certain questions. Feel free to answer it. There is, all the answers are good answers. So there is no right or wrong answer. You know, it just, uh, I want all of us to participate so that we can enjoy this uh, workshop, okay? So, <clears throat> so the number one thing is, uh, which I want to ask all of you is, what does healing really mean? Anybody would like to answer? What does healing mean to you? Coming back to the natural, uh, or the original state. That's right. Yeah, absolutely right. Coming back to the original state. Anybody else? Comforting. Comforting. Yeah, that's also one of the one of the ways you can do healing. So if you think about healing like in a way that, uh, say if you cut your finger, right? And then the blood starts coming out. So what you do is you immediately try to close the wound, you clean it, and then you put some kind of a medicine on it. And then you, you take care of it. So over a period of like a week, two weeks, the wound actually heals. And then one day you take, out your, take off your bandage or you remove uh, whatever you have taped it with. And then you realize like, oh, this, uh, the, the, there is no, not even a uh, scar, you know, on my finger and it's back to the not natural normal state. So healing, actually it means is uh, going back to its natural state. So as somebody responded earlier. So you, when you come back to your original state, that's what it means to have healed, you know. So at a physical level, it's very easy to recognize that. So it's very easy to recognize that you have healed. But, uh, but at the at the level of other parts of us, you know. So so one is that we have a physical body, then we have emotions, we have mind, we have heart, or we have soul. All of these different different parts of us. What does healing means at these different levels? So how do I say my mind is healed? How do I say my heart is healed? How do I say my soul is healed? What are the signs, you know? Anybody would like to answer? When the contented. Sorry, can you repeat? Somebody was talking. Uh, uh, you are always contented. Then you're always content, okay. When Feeling you happy. don't complain. When you don't complain, okay. And you get My more energy. Uh, this part of the body, you get more energy. Okay, that's also good. So let, mind let, stays peaceful. Mind oh. is peaceful when mind is healed. Then. Right. Doesn't pain at all. Doesn't pain at all, okay. All of this is good. So let me ask you one thing, just one by one, step by step. So when your mind is healed, what is the experience of a healed mind? Happiness. Happiness. What else? Calm and cool. Calm and Very cool. Calm. Yeah. yeah. And peace. Relief. Yeah. So if you... Love you don't get any pain. Yeah. Sophie, have you heard the, have you heard the expression peace of mind? No. Yeah. So, so peace of mind is a very interesting quality of the mind. All the things which you have said is accurate. But how do I really know that my mind is it is when my mind is in a peaceful state? Right? So peace of mind, that's why it's the expression. So if we, if we have to talk about how my heart is healed. So what's the expression for the heart, you know? Good feelings. Yes, what else?
so you you also talk about my heart is content my heart is fulfilled and my heart is full of love so all of these are the qualities in which you can say hey if the heart is healed it has all of these qualities you know and my heart is trusting you know it trust others similarly at the level of the soul how do you know you are healed you know your soul is healed what would be a completely healed soul on in other words when soul is in an original nature what is the quality of the soul is pure is pure that's one of the things what else there is no disturbance in the soul there is no disturbance in the soul no negative emotions like this right there is no negative emotions in the so all of these are good you know but in a, if all of these qualities are working together it's pure there is no negative uh, negativity there if all of these things are working fine then the soul is powerful and the soul is light right or in other words sometimes people say my soul is free right <laughs> so you have experience of power you have experience of lightness and there is their experience of there is the experience of freedom there so all of these if you are experiencing and you are experiencing consistently and consistently here means moment by moment then that shows that your mind your heart your soul they are all healed that means they are ori- they are back to the original state you know so similarly when you have these things all in the original state they are all healed then there are certain things which would happen naturally like you would experience more flow in life there is more openness there is more trust there is clarity in the mind because there is no worries running through your mind and similarly your heart is always in a compassionate mode it is always giving there is no no questions about should i trust this should i not trust this similarly when your soul is free you naturally feel that you're flying right and that doesn't mean that you don't have challenges around you but none of those challenges are there to bother you in any way so they are actually there they, even though all of these things are there you are able to be powerful light and free so in in some way or other we all have this experience of what it feels to be in this space of peace in this space of lightness in this space of uh, power so what we are going to do is we are going to do a very simple exercise you know and uh, there is no way you can do it wrong in any way <laughs> so don't feel bad about it oh my experience was different than other people or whatever it is but what we are going to do is a very simple exercise and the exercise is to really tap into the original state of my mind original state of my heart and original state of my so okay so i invite you to just close your eyes for a moment and just follow my instruction that's all you have to do so don't try to get into some other state or try to practice meditation we are not doing any of that all i'm doing is guiding you in a very simple way so that we can experience some of these original states so sit relaxed feel your feet on the ground your back supported by the chair have your spine erect so the energy can flow and we are going to take a couple of deep breaths so take a deep breath in inhale all the way and when you feel you cannot inhale anymore just push a little bit more and then exhale and as you exhale just go all the way uh so that you release anything which doesn't belong in this moment take another deep breath in and exhale then if a sound or a heavy breath comes out that's absolutely normal take another deep breath in and exhale and just give yourself permission internally that for next few moments your hair to relax that's pretty much it your hair to enjoy next few moments and just continue to breathe in breathe out so i want you to bring into your awareness what it means if you are experiencing the fulfillment of your heart like your heart is content like it's full of contentment 
And uh, some of you have experienced that in some relationship, like when you are in nature, when you're watching a sunset, when you are uh, in company of some loved one, when you are in meditation, you're remembering God, whatever it is, so bring that memory back, you know. And as you bring that memory back, I want you to tune into the feeling under that memory. How do you feel that feeling of contentment, that feeling of fullness? And even if some of you have not a very good experience in the past, so you don't have any memory, just bring into your awareness, what would it feel like when my heart is full, when it's overflowing with love, when it's overflowing with compassion? So what does it feel to have that full content heart? And just continue to breathe as we are going along. And notice as you bring that awareness, what it feels like having a full content heart, heart full of love. How do you feel in this body? Like how do you feel in your bones? Does something subtly change like your posture, your awareness? Now I want you to bring into awareness one more thing. So what would it feel like when you have a very clear and peaceful mind? What would it feel like when your mind is absolutely clear, it's certain, free from all the worries, it's just very peaceful, very calm. So even if you, we all have a um, memory of it here and there, we have experienced some of them, some of you have experienced more, but deep inside you really know what it feels like to have that kind of a clear mind, peaceful mind. So notice as you bring into awareness, how does it feel when you're living a life where you have a peaceful mind? Again, notice how your energy shifts, what changes certainly in your posture, in your feeling, in your body, when you are into sitting in this awareness that I have a very clear mind, very peaceful mind. It's focused, it's open. Now the last step, I want you to bring into awareness, how does it feel to be a really powerful soul, be really light, very powerful, and actually very free. And we all know deep inside how it feels to be in that place. And uh, that is the memory which is deep down within us. So what it feels to be fully powerful, what it feels to be light, what it feels to be free. And now notice, as you are in this space of power, being a powerful soul, being a free soul, being somebody whose heart is really full, very content, your mind is very clear, very peaceful. All of these things combined, how does it feel in this moment? How does it feel being in this body in this moment? How is your energy feeling? How's your emotions in this moment? And how are you in this moment? And a step further, who are you in this moment? You can breathe into it in this space. And as you say, exhale, just bring into realization, you're already tapping into it in this moment. So thank you, you can open your eyes whenever you're ready.
And uh, anyone would like to share in a word or a sentence, how do you feel in this moment after this exercise which we have done? <laughs> Anybody would like to share? You can even also type into the chat box, like just one word or a sentence. How do you feel? And there is I no. Felt, right. I felt stillness. My senses are uh, still uh, quiet. Uh, keeps feeling quiet, and body is uh, in stillness. And then the inside is, is in the stillness. No disturbance. Very happy. Thank you. Very good. Thank you. Thanks for Thank sharing. You. Anybody else would like to share? Light and free. Light and free. Great. So, so we release all my, my anger, uh, my negativities, everything is released and completely, my mind is completely peaceful and free. Awesome. Thank you. Thanks for sharing that. So what we did was we just took four or five minutes. And within this four or five minutes, we trained ourselves, we tapped into our original qualities, like what it feels like to be a fulfilled heart, a peaceful mind, a very powerful and light soul. So in this moment, we actually went back to our original state at all of these levels, at the level of our mind, our heart, and at our soul. So the simple practice is, if you really want to be healed completely, is to keep on repeating this experience moment by moment, moment by moment, and you're there already. So it's as simple as that. So, so how does healing really occurs, you know? So if you really see, when we understand that healing is going back to our natural state, uh, healing is an auto healing. So we have an auto healing mechanism. And what I mean by that is uh, all the different things which we witness in our life, nature, mind, heart, and soul, they all come with auto healing mechanism, which means, which means what? Their natural tendency is to return to its original state. A very good example of nature healing is like in last one year with a lot of lockdowns happening around the world, you might have seen a lot of different pictures where nature has come back to its natural state in certain places, like the animals start coming back, the vegetation start coming back. And why, why did that happen? The reason it happened was that all the disturbances, all the blockages, all the different things which were not allowing nature to come back, whether it's through pollution, human created pollution, all of those kind of things were taken out. And when all of these blockages were taken out, all that was remaining was nature for itself to heal back. So, so what does it really mean? If nature can do that, how we can do a healing of mind, heart, and soul. A very simple strategy is stop blocking the flow. So the flow naturally comes back to its original state. So if it's flowing back to its original state, it's actually healing itself. But what doesn't allow us to heal is, heal our mind, heal our heart, and heal our soul is that we do not uh, create an environment which allows the flow to go back to its natural state, you know? So that's why there is a saying, like Rumiya said, your task is not to seek for love, but merely to seek and find all the barriers within yourself that you have built against it. So what it really means is that you have to just release all the things which are not allowing it to heal. You know? So mind's tendency, if you release all the worry, would naturally come back to the state of peace. Similarly, if we release all the negativity from our heart, if we release the past experiences, then our heart would get healed. And so would our soul. So what blocks us from healing is one is coming back to its natural flow. The second is at the level of the mind, at the level of the heart, and at the level of the soul, our past experiences and memories. So things which have happened to us in the past and the experiences of them, which are stored in, in, in our mind and our bodies, in our hearts, those are unhealed and unprocessed energies, which are there. So when all of this is happening, then what really happens is that we feel always drawn to the past because the past is not healed, then it keeps on interfering with the present. And if it interferes with the present, then we are already interfering with the future. So when all of this is happening at the level of our mind, at the level of our heart and the soul, 
we feel the experience that uh, that something is missing, something is incomplete, you know, and it comes out into our feelings. And that's why the very common language which we usually use is my feelings are hurt, right? So that's the expression which we all use. My feelings are hurt. Like when your heart is not feeling the love, when your heart is not feeling contentment, when your mind is going through the worries and anxiety, that's when you actually feel that your feelings are hurt. And, and ultimately, what all this unhealed and unprocessed energy is from the past, which is there. And all of us, there is not even a single one I have met in my life who has not gone through some kind of hurt, some kind of, uh, some kind of experience of distrust, you know. And all of these actually create uh, this, this experience. Like when we were in our childhood, something really happened. Like, so we feel rejected, you know. If you, like it's very common between siblings, one sibling feels that the, my parents love my brother or sister more than me. You know, you feel so you feel rejected. So similarly in a relationship with, with your own spouse, you do not feel your expectations are met, even though you're doing everything in that moment, you feel rejected, you feel uh, hurt. And then there are bigger instances where somebody actually betrayed you. You opened your heart, you loved somebody with all your heart and they betrayed you. So when they betrayed you, then you feel actually that all of these things uh, which has happened with me has happened because I opened my heart. I was very naive, you know, so you start judging yourself, you start blaming yourself. And then when you do that, you also promise to yourself, next time, I'm not going to be that naive. I'm not going to open my heart. I'm not going to be trusting that much. So somebody broke your trust, they betrayed you. And over a period of time, what happened is you lost trust in relationships and you tell yourself you're not going to trust somebody you're not going to open your heart in the same way similarly when you are growing up if somebody manipulated you somebody and betrayal can happen in different different ways somebody manipulated you somebody took advantage of you uh, or somebody actually violated your boundaries in all of those situations you would feel like oh all of these things have happened because i allowed this to happen so you blame yourself then there is other person so if somebody manipulated you using sweetness, their sweetness, and you trusted them. Now, every time you meet somebody who's really sweet, you're already on the guard, you know, you're already like, hey, this is a sweet person. The last sweet person who was talking to me with a lot of sweetness actually betrayed me. So I'm not going to open my heart towards them. Similarly, some authority figure, whether it's your parents, uh, your teacher, whoever it is, they, they took advantage of you in some ways or didn't meet your expectation than anybody who is in the authority figure, you will not trust them. So now in the future, whether they be, there are your bosses or whether cops or whoever it is, uh, you're not going to trust them because somebody in the authority figure betrayed you. So one is the energy which is sitting there of the betrayal or rejection or whatever is the hurt which you have experienced. Second, the story around it, whatever has happened. So there is energy, there is story. And then third, because somebody who was sweet or somebody who was authority figure actually took advantage of you, you're not going to trust any one of them. So all, this becomes your belief system that I'm not going to trust any of them, th those things. So now you're carrying this energy with you. You're carrying the story with you. And then you are also carrying this unprocessed, unhealed emotions. So between these three, you get entangled, you know. So even though you want to open your heart, you want to trust other people, you want to get away from this experience of rejection, you want to accept yourself, it becomes really hard because at the center of this is now this fear which is sitting and driving your life. So when you try to resolve this, it's really challenging because on one side, your mind would come with all the stories, all the negativity. On the other side, in your subconscious is your belief system. And on the other, and on the third side is this energy, which is very real because every time you think about that incident, you feel the hurt and the pain immediately, right? Even though this might have happened 10 years back, 20 years back, all of those things. And the reason I'm telling you this is because I work with people, I coach people. So I help them identify where they are storing all of these energies, what's really happening. So if you try to resolve it by yourself, it becomes a little challenging. Similarly, uh, Similarly, when you try to read through it, you try to talk through it, these are all good. These are all great strategies. But 
if you're not able to resolve this fundamental thing, which is the energy, the past experience, which you're carrying in form of these emotions, then it's always going to follow it. And it doesn't matter if this has happened when you're 10 years old and now you're 60, 70 years old, that whole energy is still carrying on because it's not being released from your system. Does it make sense? Anybody has any questions? So say somebody betrays you, you know, and somebody breaks your heart. Nowadays in medical science, if, if somebody breaks your heart and you feel this pain, you feel this emotion, and it really disturbs, it can actually disturb your uh, heart, physical heart. And in medical science, there's a term for it. It's called broken heart syndrome. So you can search and read more about it that uh, if somebody has, has been betrayed, they feel really hurt, it affects their heart rhythmic system also. So all of these over a period of time, if they're not healed, they start translating into physical ailment, you know, because previously the signal is coming, the discomfort is coming because you already know you cannot trust people. There are all of those symptoms are there. Every time you think about that past experience, you still feel it. Yeah. But at the end of the day, if you don't take care of it, the amplification of these signals become higher and higher and at one point of time it would start if you don't listen to the signals what happens to the signal signals become louder and the loudness here in the last frontier is your physical body it would start showing stuff in your physical body does it make sense so when this is happening you are actually operating out of fear-based operating system so everything you're looking at life through this lens of what could go wrong you're worrying, your mind is in worry, it cannot be at peace. You want to open your heart and give love and receive love. You cannot do that because the past experience is still sitting there. So instead of operating from a healed operating system, what's happening? You're operating from a fear-based operating system. Sometimes it's almost like, think of it as a virus which has come into your computer. When the virus is there in your computer, you can't really function properly. It would keep on stopping you from doing what you want. Sometimes it locks the file, sometimes it send some other kind of website to different websites. So all of this uh, really created, creates a non-optimal experience of your life. So the, the thing what we can do is, as we move along in life is, our goal is to come back into the flow. Because by coming back into the flow, we are able to start on our journey of healing. So, to come into the flow, what is really required is to allow you to come into the flow is to allow yourself to express what's going on. So express what's going on means like, uh, like if you are really, if you're really going through a challenging time where you want to express, like for example, when we lose somebody in our life, right? Somebody passes away, the soul leaves the body and we have a lot of grief which we carry. In that moment, what is really important is the, that I should go through the grieving process so I can let go all the grief, all that loss which is there. But in this world, we have this expectation that, oh, somebody leaves and then take your two weeks, three weeks, go through the whole thing, and then you should go back to normal. And the setup is such that like people just take two weeks, if they're working and they go back to their job. And it's, ex it's the expectation that it, within two weeks, you should be able to work on your loss. And everybody... Every single one here deals with change, deals with loss in a very, very different way. So for some people, two weeks is enough. For other people, four months is not enough. For other people, some people take six months. Some people take a year. Some people take a little bit more than that. But everybody's on their own journey. That's why they really try to uh, take their own time. But if you're not healing yourself, if you're not healing yourself in a proper way, then what really happens is that you carry this grief and you become functional. Your life from outside looks like everything is okay, but what you're carrying is this grief in your heart. So every time you try to, if, and depending on how close that person was, uh, that's how deeply you would feel that loss. And in certain philosophies, in certain practices, uh, certain uh, spiritual practices, people say, oh, you should let it go immediately. You know, You should be done with it. And you should not express your grief. You know, you should not allow yourself to feel the sadness and all of this thing. 
So all of those things are good philosophies. If you're powerful, you can follow it, but most of the people will not be able to follow it, but they try to suppress it. So if you suppress it, then it becomes much more difficult. And then you're out of the flow. And when you're out of the flow, whatever grief needs to move through you so that you can come back to your original state, it doesn't happen. So you stay there with that unintegrated, unprocessed energy as a block throw. So an expression here means you should allow your express, allow yourself to express this, allow yourself to go through that sadness. So the earlier you go through it, the earlier you close the chapter and move forward, you let go. So expression here is letting go. Whatever is there on the way, in the way, you let it go. So similarly, sometimes the expression is through movement, right? Sometimes you become silent. You allow yourself to express through silence. Sometimes you breathe through it. Sometimes you come into the sound. Like if somebody has uh, taken advantage of you or somebody has uh, violated your boundaries in that moment, you want to say, use your sound. So when you want to say, no, no, you can't do this to me. That's using your sound, using your voice to express. So there are different expressions in different ways. And as you become more present, more real, you would be able to tap what needs to be expressed in this moment. And all of this is with one goal. So as you express, you come back into flow. And if you come back into flow, you go back to your original state. Otherwise, it becomes very difficult. Like all of these emojis that we use in our, in our texting, they're trying to express something, right? And they express it better than the words, you know? So when you show a happy face, when you show an angry face, these are all the ways you're expressing. So you express it on day-to-day -day basis in your text, but you, can, you do not do it on day-to-day -day basis. And whatever is not expressed, whether that past hurt, past betrayal, past grief, it stays suppressed. And when it stays suppressed, suppression creates the blockage. That's the biggest challenge which really happens when you suppress yourself. And when you suppress, the flow is immediately blocked, right? So if you've seen like how, if you suppress the flow of water in a drain, what really happens to that drain? Over a period of time, the dirt starts accumulating, right? And then you would start seeing a lot of flies, a lot of mosquitoes, then more dirt accumulates. And then as it keeps on becoming bigger and bigger over a period of time, more trash accumulates, and then the whole thing starts stinking, right? So when, why all of this? Because there is no flow there in that moment. It's, it's blocked. And we all go through this suppression in different, different ways. So first, we cannot express whatever has happened in the past with us, like whatever our past hurt, past rejection, all of those things are blocked inside. That energy is inside. That story is inside. Then second thing is we, we become, the more you block it, the more you suppress it, what keeps on happening? If you keep on applying pressure on certain things over a long period of time, it builds up, right? <laughs> when it builds up one day it would one day it would blow off it's like things which has happened the same stress keeps on building same stress keeps on building but at one point of time somebody says one small thing and the whole mountain falls right <laughs> you blow up you know the whole steam goes up and then after a couple of hours when things come back to normal you realize oh I don't know who was I in that moment something happened and once of a sudden the whole thing the whole lid blew up and I acted in a very different way. This wasn't me, but that whole thing has already happened because you're already carrying it, you know? So in spiritual terms, sometimes when we are going through this, we call it, you drop your baggage. You let go. The letting go is the dropping of the baggage and the dropping of the baggage is all of this past stuff which you're carrying. But if it was that simple, everybody would have dropped. It needs a little bit of effort. So as we meditate, things become much more clear. So man, meditation is in some ways a magnifying glass. So whatever is there inside, it magnifies. If there is joy, your joy gets magnified. If there is uh, happiness, it gets magnified. But if there is sadness or past stuff, it also gets magnified. That's why when you sit in meditation, whatever is there, it starts coming out first because it is telling you what is being accumulated there, what is blocked there, which needs to be healed. And all throughout our life in different, different ways, we are suppressed. Like, uh, and one of the reasons why we feel suppressed is because uh, in that moment, we didn't have the safety to express ourselves. So if you are in a relationship with somebody who's very angry, small things can really explode them, you would not be able to express yourself completely. When you're not able to express yourself, you would, what would you do? You would hold it inside, right? 
and when you hold it inside it stays with you and then something else happens something else happens it keeps on accumulating keeps on accumulating so as a, as a kid like when we were really happy we were running around we were very joyful like our energy was like so huge our parents would keep on saying hey tone it down you know keep it down keep it down because our parents were already suppressed they can only handle 50% of our energy and they were suppressed by their parents right because that's how they're modeling their parenting right now so then they keep on saying hey suppress suppress it like in different different ways don't do this don't do that don't do that all of this leads to suppression of their joy their natural flow of energy so suppressed 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 joy becomes neediness right and what i mean by that is like if you have to express all of your 100% of energy and it's suppressed to 70% that rest 30% so i want to feel full 100% full right but now i'm suppressed to 30% so i'm okay i can only express 70% of my energy the rest 30% how would i get it to feel full i'm going to seek attention from others in different different ways so what i do is i become needy i would do different things in which i would try to take energy from other people try to take attention from other people so that i can feel full so suppressed joy becomes neediness similarly if you suppress your fear you are not able to express your fear that that suppressed fear becomes panic similarly uh when you suppress your anger then that anger becomes rage over a period of time so suppression is the real reason why you create a lot of blockage and the reason why we suppress why we can't express is because we do not have enough safety in the environment because either we are scared of our parents or we are scared of somebody else we do not find a safe environment to express ourselves sometimes we we get on go our spiritual path and then somebody says something it hurts us but we can't respond back to them because they are an authority figure or or even though i said something to somebody which lands in a way which i didn't intend it even though my intention was totally different but it kind of landed in a way where it hurt somebody and i could not express myself or seek forgiveness that also creates block so all of this leads to a place where i cannot express clearly when i cannot express clearly i cannot come into flow when i cannot come into flow i end up in a place which is unhealed does it make sense this whole thing and the rule the law is very simple whatever so whatever you're not expressing whatever you're suppressing is you're resisting so the natural flow is you need to express but you're resisting expressing whatever the reason is whether there was lack of safety or you didn't feel comfortable but whatever you resist will persist that is the natural law so the same thing would keep on bothering you the same paper <laughs> would keep on coming through different different channels through different different people so in the end what would end up happening is no matter different story different characters but the end result is same you would end up feeling rejected you would end up feeling abandoned you know you would end up feeling hurt and another way if you want to see it from law of attraction whatever you are broadcasting you are attracting the same thing if you are broadcasting the energy of rejection because that's what you are carrying and that's what you are going to attract so the cycle keeps on repeating no matter how much how many years you are on a particular self progress journey self growth journey but since the whole thing this all the old things are not healed they keep on sitting keep on broadcasting the same vibration and you keep on attracting the same vibration does it make sense yes yes so our goal is like and and as i was telling you as you keep this holding inside like if if you if i tell you to hold your hand up for 5 minutes everybody can do that right but now if i tell you to hold this hand for 10 minutes you can still do it but it's little challenging you can still do it but now i say hold it for 4 hours what's going to happen you're going to start feeling the pain in your shoulder or some other part of the body or whatever it is all of these things would actually start creating stress so it's the same thing as you're holding that past unhealed stuff it start going to create it's it's going to start creating a lot more challenge in your body so if you hold the grief for a very long period of time it would affect your lungs if you hold the worry or anxiety for a long period of time it would affect your stomach if you are carrying a lot of fear in your system it would affect your kidney and the thing is that um, each of 
these emotions, whatever is unhealed, unprocessed, has a direct relation to a body organ. So when it starts showing up in your body, that means it's already getting late. The signal was already coming through different, different ways. Sometimes we didn't recognize it. We, because we didn't have enough safety to express ourselves, what needs to be expressed. Like, uh, like sometimes I wanted to really say, for example, I wanted to really express my love towards my parents, you know, but I didn't have a really good relationship with them and they've gone. And you still feel bad every time you think about your parents. So instead of thinking all the good qualities or being grateful to them, you every time you think about them, you start feeling, I wish I had time to share that with them. So what is left is the pain of not expressing your love towards them. You know, and this is a positive example in the sense, like I really love my parents. I wish I could have expressed more, but then there is somebody who really challenged you, who really abused you. And then it's been very common in families, especially in Indian families, where people suppress a lot. Right? So in, that's one of the cultures where people suppress a lot. You live with your in-laws, your whole life is about other people rather than yours. So, so there's, there's layers and layers of suppression which is going on. And if you do not, and then it becomes a state, then if you're suppressed, everybody finds their own way how they can express. Sometimes the steam blows off when somebody says something once in a while, or somebody goes and do something else to release their energy. In, in, in certain other cultures, some people just go and drink a lot because it helps them escape because everybody can only hold so much because you need a lot of capacity to hold, but you can't do that. So if a lot of your life energy is going into suppressing things to hold things down so that you can operate normally in your life, then it's like walking with chains in your feet. So even if you want to go for whatever you want to achieve in your life, it would be hard for you to do. If you want to sit in meditation and have that wonderful experience, you would have some moments here and there, but it will be very hard for you to completely have that experience of flying, just like what you guys experienced before. So all of this actually uh, would affect your body, your organs different ways. You can actually go and look on the internet. There is very specific terms, each body, organ, and emotion, just like I was telling you about heart, you know, broken heart syndrome. It's very real, you know, so all of them. So, and we allow this to happen. And imagine when all of this is happening on a day-to-day basis, when our phone battery starts dying, we get very stressed out. Like, I need to, <laughs> I need to charge my phone when it's 5%, 10%. I wish we can have that level of importance for our own self-care, right? We don't allow this to happen to our phone, but we let it happen to ourselves, right? We do not take out that time for our self-care to be really see what needs to be healed. And that is one of the things which we really need to do to be, become more real so that we can heal. Because ultimately, in the end, whose benefit it is? If I am a completely healed, positive, my heart is full, my, my mind is uh, peaceful, first of all, I'm going to benefit. And second, everybody else around me is going to get benefited from that experience. Does it make sense? Yes. Thank you. Okay. Yes, thank you. So... If you have question anything till whatever I have shared, you can ask me now because now what we are going to go is into the second part of this equation about how do we how do we go about healing ourselves? Okay, and all of these topics which I which I discussed, they are a workshop in itself. So I don't have time to go in depth of what suppression is, how people escape suppression, all of those things. Maybe when I do a workshop at other point of time, we can take one topic specifically. What are different blockages are? How people escape? What are their strategies, defense mechanisms? But in, in, in importance of our time, I just want to make sure I, I give a context around this and then also share some tools which would help you get on this journey. So before I move a step further into the solutions of it, anybody would like to share anything or have any questions? Yes. I have a question there too, because uh, people are not understanding too much. Sometimes we suppress our emotions and, be, uh, and we don't express it because uh, we are thinking that the other people, what the other people think about us. So that is the big problem. Yeah, I, I was talking to my friend today and he said, uh, in our culture, and he's from India, in our culture, we always think about those four people, what those four people are going to think about us what those four people are going to say about this thing, right? So those four people are the most important of our people in our life. 
who do i didn't who i don't even know who are these four people we keep our best of our crockery best of our dishes for those four people when they would come we would take them out and and serve them right and i have probably used that those dishes and those crockeries probably three four times in my life they are all sitting in their cupboard for those four people so we spend our whole life about those four people what people are going to say but then the next question which you are saying is if if they are our personal relationship you know then we have to really create that kind of a relationship where we can express ourselves in a way and it that needs some communication over a period of time that what i'm saying they are able to understand what they are saying i'm able to understand and sometimes we do not have opportunity even with our best intention for example and i'm just using an example of parents and children or partners you know like if i'm i i have i'm going through a challenging time and i want to exp- uh, i want somebody to understand me so even though my partner or my parents tell me please tell me what's going on with you right what's going on with you but i know as soon as i tell them they would get worried right so why should i even tell them tell you so i hold it within myself because even though i want to tell them they want to really listen but at the same time i don't want to i don't want them to get worried here the lack of safety is the person who is interested my loved one doesn't have capacity to handle whatever i am going to share because he or she would get immediately worried that's why a lot of us don't even share what's going on with our parents because our parents would immediately get worried so i don't find it enough safety in them that i can share what's going on with me so i hold it with myself and i didn't find anybody else to share it so in that situation i have to i have to find a way how i can express where i where can i go where i can talk to them that's why a lot of people go to therapists because you can go and talk to them and uh, some people pick up a phone and call some of their best friend to talk to them because after talking it helps them become lighter you have realized it yourself when you talk to somebody about a situation you become lighter sometimes you cry you become lighter these are all different ways in which you release but the most important thing is if you can release that energy that energy of hurt that energy of whatever you are trying to share in whatever way it is then you would come to a healing otherwise it becomes difficult does it answer your question yeah thank you yeah. i understand so even with the best intention sometimes it's very hard and sometimes you end up into relationship which are very challenging the way where the other person is not interested in listening to you other person is not interested in talking to you or giving you your power or your space then it's a different ball game you know you feel much more hurt in that way so the number one rule of any healing is this what you can feel you can feel and what you cannot feel you cannot heal so let me share with you this image you know so <clears throat> when when i'm sitting with this old unhealed stuff you know somebody has hurt me i have been rejected i am feeling abundant all of these different energies when I, when i'm when i'm holding them inside what's really happening is uh, between the stories which are coming up because as soon as i as i think about that person or think about that situation i feel that right inside my body it's very much there in my nervous system and then immediately the story comes up or when i look at somebody so there was this this person who was hurt by david you know so he, david said something 20 years back to that lady and then one day when this lady was crossing the road on the other side of the road she saw david and as soon as she saw david she really felt the same pain same hurt whatever david said 20 years back and as she was crossing the road she kept on thinking about david and that situation so as she crossed and reached to the other side of the road she realized oh this person is not even david he looked like david <laughs> and then in, but in that moment you know whatever time from the time she has this thought to the time she crossed the road she already went through all that emotion all that worry so what was there was that whole thing of whatever has happened in the past is still sitting with you so in order for you to bring this unprocessed and unintegrated emotion and energy back to normal you know back to normal means back to flow so the energy can naturally flow in your system you have to feel it but the challenge is the past hurt past rejection past abandonment past betrayal energy is so strong that 
whenever you think about feeling it, as soon as you go close to it, it's so painful that your mind will create situation, create stories to avoid you from feeling it. Because mind is working on one single track, which is a go for pleasure and avoid any pain. Even in long term, that short term pleasure is going to hurt you. Or that experiencing the pain in this moment, in long term is going to heal you, right? So it's like everybody has different associations. If I say few things and you check yourself, like what do you, and you don't have to share with me, what is your association with this thing? Getting up in the morning, pleasure or pain? What do you think? It's pleasure or pain. There is no right or wrong answer. Going on a vacation, pleasure or pain? Going to work, pleasure or pain? Both. It's fine. It's, it's, and there is no right or wrong answer. But I'm asking you to check what is your association in your mind with these things. Meeting your in-laws, pleasure or pain, right? Meeting your old friend, pleasure or pain. Uh, uh, going to your kids, parent-teacher meeting, pleasure or pain. See, if you check yourself, you have your own association. So mind, what it determines is pain, it could avoid it. And what it associates with pleasure, it could go for it. So some people getting up in the morning to go out, work out is a painful thing. Whereas sleeping in the morning in your nice warm bed is pleasure. So what that's the way mind avoids you from feeling the pain. And, and the more you avoid feeling the pain, you would not be able to experience the place where you can heal yourself. So because you can't feel it. And, and all of these different things, the experience of past hurt, past rejection, past abandonment. Like when you were a kid, you really wanted to be loved by your parents. You wanted to be there. Uh, you wanted to be adored by them. But for some reason, they didn't meet your expectation in the way you wanted. Even though they did their best to love you, whatever it is, but it didn't meet your expectation. And so all your experience all the time was that, oh, my parents didn't love me. So there was a story of this girl. Uh, she was like probably four or five years old and she was in she, she lived in a big house and she was in her bedroom and there was a sound and she got a little afraid. And then in that moment, she started crying out for her mother. And her mother was in the other side of the house where she was doing laundry. So she couldn't hear that girl's, uh, that girl's crying. And then as she, as she felt, the little girl felt afraid. She couldn't soothe herself. She was looking for her mother. She felt that her mother is not there for her. She felt in that moment, her mother has abandoned her, you know. And then similarly, another time this experience happens. Now, if this happened a couple of times, her, she, she has already created that story. When she feels abandoned, that means her mother has abandoned her. She, which means she doesn't love her. So how true is that story for that five, six years old? It was a misunderstanding, but she created that story. And now she's going to live with that story if that part is not healed for the rest of her, for her life. So now every time she gets into a relationship, even though she wants to open herself up, love other people, experience that, their love, experience all of this, it's very hard for her to create that meaningful relationship because every time she thinks about relationship, she feels she's rejected and she's abandoned. So in order to deal with that, what you really need to do is that little, that woman who has grown up who has this experience of a little girl being abandoned, she has to go back to that place and feel that abundant that energy of abandonment in her and different energies are stored in different different parts so when we practice meditation like especially in raj yoga we become more aware of what's going on with us you know and when when we realize what's going on with us then the next step is how should i go and handle this how should i go and create the flow back how should i express that so in this moment the expression in this situation is to really feel that abandonment energy to realize in this moment you are not abandoned in this moment, you're grown up. You can take care of yourself. You are, you have all the understanding. You have all the knowledge. You, you are, you're a grown up person. You can mature. So in this moment, as you go and feel into this energy, you realize you can handle it. And as you can handle it, you can feel into it. You would feel the pain. You would feel the hurt of the little girl, but then you would get healed. So in a very simple term, what is it called? You have accepted whatever was there in the past in this moment, right? And the moment you have accepted whatever was there in the past, you have healed it. And by doing that, 
the other part of the equation already comes into picture you have let go right you have let go whatever needs to be let go so that little girl of 6 years old was still waiting to be accepted because what she felt was abundant what she felt was afraid and as you go back and connect with this little girl feel into that energy allow yourself to feel it allow yourself to feel through it and then let it go you have accepted then you realize there is there isn't anything which is more there but if you do not do this you can sit with this for years and it keep on piling up one experience after another in relationship does it make sense yes thank you so so there are several ways you can approach this yes. you know so fundamentally there are three things which you really need to be really good at you know you really need to practice on day to day basis to really get on this journey to heal yourself to come back into flow so one is to be present so present is when you meditate you become really present to really sit and you become present when you meditate by bringing your soul consciousness by connecting to god or whatever you faith or system you believe in when you connect to that higher power then you become present you can also in very simple terms become present by connecting to your breath now once you become present the second step comes is to be really real and really real means to really look inside and see what's really going on and what's really going on is am i happy is my heart fulfilled is my mind experiencing the clarity and the peace is my soul light and it doesn't matter how many years you have been on your spiritual journey or your self development journey if you haven't done this work of going back of connecting with yourself what you can feel you can heal if you haven't done that the stuff is still there the bag is still there so become really real you should not shortcut your journey by saying oh i have been told i have to be always happy no matter what's happening i should always have a happy face and that's great if you're internally happy it's great to show you're happy that doesn't mean if you are not happy you become a victim every time you're crying that's also not what i'm trying to say but to be really real with yourself what's really happening even after so many years i still feel suppressed i still have these experiences because you can hide your 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 different ways and your your own internal experience but you can't hide your feelings from your own self you can hide it from other people then the third thing is as you come to realization hey these are the things which have not been resolved you know whatever i am practicing it's not helping me resolve this then you have to instead of feeling guilty feeling upset beating yourself down you have to actually treat yourself in a very simple way which is in a heart centered manner you know which is heart centered manner is to look at yourself with compassion like the example of that little girl so treat your self that how you would treat that little child with lot of love lot of compassion uh, and then you can actually have a headway because the moment you start beating yourself you are feeling guilty and all of those that means your mind has hijacked the whole process so what is really happen in that moment is that in that moment the thoughts and stories and belief system and hijack the process you have to stay true to this circle so that you can actually work on healing of it rather than beating yourself down you know so don't beat yourself so number one is how do you become come to a platform from where you can watch everything little bit in a detached manner without getting caught up into it by practicing meditation so some of you who have been practicing raj yoga meditation you already know what it is and meditation comes from a latin word called madri madri means to heal that's what we are talking about so when you're meditating you're actually going back and healing and on this journey you would find all the things which needs to be healed so you are going back to your original self you know and why the meditation is important is because it could help you handle that part which is the mind which is creating stories mind doesn't care whether it's a real story or not it just picks up the emotion and turns it to own stories so that mind is trying to come to a closure with it you know like for example when you watch a movie if it's a happy movie it's a happy ending you finish and you go home. if it's a sad movie <laughs> you look at it like okay i wish there was a different ending but you are still okay it's sad and you move on the biggest challenging movies are the ones which have no happy ending no sad ending and you determine the ending yourself you get more confused you keep on thinking about it. why 
because you're trying to come to a closure to that whole whole story right so your mind is still trying to create all the stories it doesn't matter whether it's real or not to come to closure but the real closure is when you can actually heal those energies those emotions from the past so so that's the first step which i do to practice meditation the second is to zoom out to really have a bigger perspective so this example which i'm showing you is like this is our galaxy milky way and within that is this small dot which is our earth and within that small earth is me living in a small city in a small street with my big story so if you really see in a bigger picture how much is this valuable so one of my friend always tells me when you are getting worried about somebody something you should ask this thing would this thing be relevant in 10 minutes would this thing be relevant in 10 months would this thing be relevant in 10 years if the answer to any of them is yes then you should focus on it but otherwise it's not worth it so when you 10 years down the line you look at this particular situation like no it's not really that big of a deal and check your own life your own example as you have gone through your own life there were things which were really terrible like where you were really hurt it was a painful experience you even thought i'm not going to come out of it alive and guess so or you look at the same incident 5 6 years down the line and you look back and you realize wow actually that was a very you know even though it was painful it was a growing experience for me i have actually learned something i've grown out of it and if that wouldn't happen i wouldn't have been here a lot of your people's spiritual journey has started because they went through some some painful experience so you keep a bigger perspective and easiest way to put a give a bigger perspective to yourself is instead when you're going through the situation some challenging situation instead of asking this question why me why this is happening with me why i'm so unlucky ask this question what is what is it in this situation that i need to learn what is the lesson for me in this situation and if you turn it around then you would realize oh this is what i really need to do because when you're going through the situation it's very hard to see the bigger picture but always keep the bigger picture so even when you're confused just trust that in a bigger picture it would be all right i it would make sense to me if not now 6 months from now and sometimes you go and talk to other people like people who have been on this journey through this situation who can give you a perspective like some of you who have taken the meditation course in raj yoga you already know the bigger picture right the drama the universe how things are connected how we connect and what is our settlements of our karma and all of those things are there so keep that zoom out perspective but trust in a bigger picture everything would be fine even though i do not understand it right now okay so that's other thing and that's also like in the indian saying it says you will never get anything before time and more than destiny so trust your destiny so in hindi they say like samay se pehle aur kismat se zyada kisi ko nahi milta right so it's the same thing so if you if you if you are if you haven't come to a com- completion that means the timing is not there right so completion would naturally feel your heart is full you are complete with it even if it's the worst of the experience you would naturally come to a completion but you can wait for this completion in certain situations as the time goes because sometimes people say hey time is a great healer so you go wait for 10 years you can heal but what i'm sharing with you are the tools which can help you expedite that healing process not to shortcut it but expedite it by facing it head on so this is another strategy which i want to share with you which my wife created and it's called boat so whenever the life in the ocean feels rocky you get on a boat so what is boat boat is to breathe first in that moment I mean you're going through a challenging time your number one friend is not meditation your number one friend is not eating food your number one friend is not watching tv or avoiding number one friend is breathing so bring yourself to breathe 10 deep breaths what happens is as more oxygen comes your brain moves out of your limbic brain which is the flight fight and flight brain into the smart brain which is the prefrontal cortex which where you can make all the rational decision second thing is to observe what's really going on and your mind would come back this is going on that is going on. so you ask that question is it really real what i'm thinking that this person hates me or this person doesn't like me or life is going to be terrible all of these things your mind would first time come and say yes it is then you pause and you ask is it really real you repeat that question and you realize it would be a different answer so second thing is observe third thing is accept accept what 
in this moment i am feeling hurt in this moment i am feeling hopeless in this moment i am feeling challenged the key word is in this moment if you're feeling hopeless that doesn't mean you're hopeless but in this moment you're feeling it so accept it sometimes we avoid feeling what needs to be felt sometimes i avoid feeling if somebody said something and i'm hurt but i don't want to show i'm hurt i don't want to accept i'm hurt right so the more you keep on prolonging it resisting feeling hurt what happens what you resist will persist it means you're suppressing it when you're suppressing it what's going to happen the pressure is going to build so instead of avoiding accepting it accept it allow yourself to feel whatever is there because whatever you allow yourself to feel then you would become free but the more you would suppress it more you would resist it the more it would be and then once you accept it the next question would come so if this has happened what should i do next how should i transform it what's the next step and then you take the next step whatever it is so in this moment yeah i have to go and talk to somebody in this moment i have to find change the strategy of my life and i haven't met a single person in my life who has planned their life and it has exactly worked out the way they really wanted you didn't get the admission in the school you wanted but that doesn't mean you stopped there you find an admission different school you didn't got that course you wanted in the university you got in different 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 course you didn't get married to the person you wanted you got married to somebody else you didn't get whatever you wanted but you found a plan b so when you get stuck in this get on the boat okay so for the ride okay and this is the last strategy which i want to share with you so it's called rain it's also used in buddhism so rain means recognize what's happening in order to recognize the number one step is to be present and real so recognize what's going on whether you're happy sad excited calm you could also feel mixture of feelings you know then allow your experience to be as it is don't try to change it i'm feeling sad i don't want to feel sad feeling sad means you have your own internal translation feeling sad means you are a victim so oh you're not a good enough person you're not pure. whatever it is these are all stories leave them aside allow your experience to be as it is without being judgmental to it your mind creates judgment so you are leaving mind aside you are being present you are being real see what's really going on and then investigate with kindness investigate with kindness means be compassionate just like being compassionate to that little girl what she is feeling so compassionate to yourself without judging yourself so if you are feeling guilty you are feeling uh feeling shameful that means you are judging yourself leave them aside come back with compassion what do i really want if i'm feeling hurt what should i do to take care of this person who's hurt if i'm feeling upset what should i do because inside if you do this dialogue it become very clear when i work with people i help them guide through this experience but ultimately you are actually navigating and becoming better at your own thing and third and the last thing is non identification non identification means not to identify with that particular thing what's going on you're not denying it you're accepting it but at the same time you're not identifying like for example if you're feeling sad that doesn't make you a sad person you are experiencing the emotions of sadness very different from i am sad versus i am experiencing the emotions of sadness i am feeling powerless in this moment so i am experiencing the emotions of powerlessness or hopelessness but i am not powerless i am not hopeless just like you feel happy you feel joy you feel sad all of these are parts of experience but as you become real present and take care of yourself from a very compassionate place you will be able to navigate through all of this and then the final thing is find a safe space find everybody should find their own safe space whether it's a company of your friend whether it's a company of people who can guide you like a, like a community you know like a, those who come to the meditation center you already have a very safe space uh, where you can talk to people even though it's a couple of people where you can express yourself without feeling judged without feeling fixed you know without asking for fixing so tell those people like hey i want to vent in this moment and that's okay i don't want you to fix me i don't want to do you to advise me just let me be in this moment the way it is because what's really important is the safety of being witnessed by somebody else in that state would allow you to heal and it's not just not you it would allow them to be healed also so find that safe space that community that friend you don't need a whole lot of people but few people where you could be yourself and express yourself and that would help you bring you back into the flow
does it make sense so you can do it at the whatever the community you feel safe you can feel you can be open and vulnerable and i also work with people one on one where i can help you guide through all the different stories so you can really go and find a place you can heal but if you're already doing all of these things you're already in a good place so these few tools should actually help you to move through this you know and what i'm going to do is i'm going to share one simple exercise in which you can self evaluate yourself self heal yourself if you are doing it very honestly with yourself okay does it so before i get into that anybody has any question before i start the practice that's a small i did make it to help you heal that uh, can we get a powerpoint of boat b o a t yes so it's a breathe observe accept and transform anybody else would have, would like to ask any question thank you welcome thank you okay uh, so let's do a very simple meditation the idea is to observe not to and observe using your feelings not using your head so don't break in your mind your mind would come in and i would tell you how to handle it so what we are going to do is we are going to go check what's happening in our physical body in our energetic body in our emotional body and in our mind because all of these are different parts of us which are always sending us signal what's working and what's not working and a lot of times we avoid listening to these signals for different reasons you know uh, and as you become better at listening to these signals you would realize oh this is how i should take care of myself very simple you know so sit relaxed feel your feet on the ground feel your back supported by the chair so one thing which i forgot to mention was in all of this healing journey when i told you about the very first exercise where all of you sat and connected to what it feels like to be a very powerful soul who is light and free your heart a, a person whose heart is full and fully trusting what it showed if you were able to tap into it uh, no matter what degree you were able to tap into it that already shows that the original template of you the original part of you is already intact it's already healed that's a good news the only challenge is we do not have access to that part all the time even though it's there it's not accessible all the time it's like where you are sitting right now you have all the channels you have uh, abc cnn fm this that but you're not able to listen to it even though it's all there unless and until you tune into that channel so the good news is you already have access to that part that's that's the beauty of it and uh, and all you have to do is connect back with that part again and again and what is not allowing you to connect is all of these things in between all your life experiences some from this life some from past life as you go through this and all we are doing is we are bypassing all of this by really going to the root of it what is really causing this okay so this exercise is just to help you become better at how you practice it on a daily basis so take a deep breath in sit relaxed and uh, take a deep breath in and exhale take another deep breath in and exhale and uh, the first thing is i would invite you to check what's going on with your physical body so as you scan your physical body all the way from the top of your head to your feet check what's going on do you feel connected to your physical body partially connected you feel more connected with the upper part or lower part and there is nothing right or wrong it's just being real and check in this moment how do you feel in this moment in connection with your physical body maybe more some connected. of you you don't have to tell it to me so keep it to yourself so that everybody else is meditating so just check for yourself and um, as you do so you might you might come across like oh there is a part which is little more restricted little painful whatever it is acknowledge it your mind would also jump in and try to tell you oh you're feeling this because of this 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 there's nothing right nothing wrong mind would have a story 
acknowledge it and keep the story aside but feel into your physical body and see how you feel in this moment and acknowledge it and be compassionate towards your physical body and check if there is a part which is calling for special attention so take your attention and awareness to that part and as you take your attention and awareness to that part you feel into that part as if you're trying to listen what that part is trying to communicate to you and as you listen to that part have compassion have a love for that part and you can respond back to that part by saying take whatever you want in this moment and trust that it knows what it wants in this moment you are giving that part the permission to take whatever it wants to heal in this moment healing could very simply be what would make it feel better in this moment from where it is in the previous moment and notice as you give it permission how do you feel any subtle change you know does it becomes even better like 5% do you feel more at peace with it whatever it is there is no right or wrong thing just being aware what is there the next step is and continue to breathe as we are going along the next step is i want you to check your energy body energetically what's going on are you feeling very energized are you feeling very alive part of you feel alive part of you feel part of you feel energized it doesn't matter you feel more energy in the upper part lower part or you feel completely drained or tired or overwhelmed again no judgment it's all okay and you might also experience your mind is going to tell you a story about what you're feeling energetically so acknowledge that story keep that story aside and come back to your energy body check what's going on energetically now given what's going on energetically what is it that you really want in this moment in connection to your energy like you want more energy you are okay where you are or you are overwhelmed you want less energy or even if you don't know that's okay too so check and just tell yourself in this moment i want this energetically the keyword is this moment not tomorrow not day after not five years down the line but this moment and as you express this notice any subtle changes how you feel in this moment energetically now let's go to the next part next step is check your emotional body so emotionally what's going on with you are you happy are you sad are you excited are you calm you could be happy and sad at the same time excited and calm also at the same time so it doesn't really matter the one is not better than other so check what's going on emotionally in this moment and also if there is a story the mind is telling you feeling this because of this this, this. acknowledge keep it aside come back to your emotions check where are you feeling these emotion whatever is the predominant emotion like if you're feeling peace if you're feeling connected where do you feel it and given what you're feeling emotionally in this moment what is it that you really want in this moment emotionally maybe you want more connection more openness more calm more peace or maybe you're very happy content where you are that's absolutely okay so check as you express what you really want how do you feel in this moment now the next part is check what's going on in your mind right now how's your mind is it calm is it peaceful is it running around whatever it is just notice how's your mind in this moment
And just as you notice, your mind would naturally come to its own place of little more pause, a little more stability, just by noticing it. Don't try to struggle with it. If it's going somewhere else, just bring your focus on your breath and be here, that's all. Now the next step is, I want you to connect to your soul like deeply or that part of you which is all your goodness, all your power, all the beauty. And from this place, connect to the universe, connect to God, connect to Shri Baba, whoever you want to connect to and see if there is a message for you in this moment from that higher place. And it could be in form of a word, a sentence, a vibration, a feeling, or maybe there is pure silence and that's okay too. So take a moment and see what's the message for you in this moment. And whatever is the message, acknowledge it and see if it resonates with you. Either way, it is okay. It's all right. And now the last step is I want you to get to that place where we went originally. So how would it feel when your mind is calm, your mind is stable, you are experiencing peace of mind? How does it feel when you're in that space? Also, how would it feel when your heart is full and content? It's trusting, it's open, there is a natural flow of love and giving and receiving. And now bring into awareness how would it feel when you as a soul is completely powerful, completely light, completely free, completely in flow. So bring that knowing which is deep inside you in this moment. How would it feel to be like that? And when you are in this place, how does it feel being in this body, having all of these qualities present, accessible, and you're living it? Notice your feelings, your energy, your posture, all the things, your emotions. So take a deep breath in and when you're ready, you can, whenever you're ready, you can open your eyes and as you open your eyes, as you look through these eyes, see how you feel as you connect back to this world from this place. So I would pause here and thank you for joining. I hope you enjoyed this, uh, some of the tools which I shared, some of the context to understand it better. And I wish you all the best in your journey of healing, in your spiritual journey to become that best, aware, beautiful, 